When emergency first responders were overwhelmed by Los Angeles County's most destructive fire yet, a band of surfers, along with their neighbors and friends, stepped up to defend their home turf in Malibu. Their devotion to home drove them to show up for their community during the fire and for years afterward. And now, a model they call the Community Brigade Program could change everything leading to more lives and more homes saved during the increasing wildfires across not just California, but the world. Join reporter Adriana Cargill from KCRW, NPR's All Things Considered, Crooked Media, and more, as she investigates a wildfire story that is not depressing, but is, in fact, a clear hope for the future. Listen now to Sandcastles, an award-winning podcast about home, how we create it, and why we fight so hard for it. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Important Not Important. I hope you're all safe and sound out there. Uh, I'm Quinn Emmett, and this is the latest in our Do Better Better series of essays. They are crafted to help you think more clearly about the future today. If you're new to our community, These essays complement the audio version of our weekly newsletter that drops on Fridays, and of course, our critically acclaimed conversations with diverse interdisciplinary humans all working on the front lines of the future. Um, We are very grateful to have you as part of our community, uh, working alongside us on the world's biggest problems and opportunities. Two quick reminders, you can get these essays, uh, our newsletter, and more right in your inbox at importantnotimportant.com. You can also send us feedback at questions at importantnotimportant.com, and you can also feel free to record a voice memo right on your phone and send that in. Today's uh, essay is called uh, Do Better Better Number 14, A Safety Net for America. There's a popular Martin Luther King Jr. quote that lays bare the false promise of the American dream. He said, It's all right to tell a man to lift himself up by his bootstraps, But it is cruel jest to say to a bootless man that he ought to lift himself up by his own bootstraps. Now, because it was Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday recently, and because we, the people, seem to have finally elected policymakers who care that our growing inequality is quite literally killing many of us, I thought it prudent to talk about safety nets uh, for bootless Americans. A safety net, traditionally, provides a margin of protection against the fluctuations of everyday life, the highs and the lows. It allows for room for error. It helps you endure. And designed purposefully, it lets you succeed. Safety nets come in a variety of literal and figurative flavors. If you're a trapeze artist, we're talking about actual rope. You can fly higher knowing you won't die if you slip. If you're an investor, a percentage of capital that remains fluid in cash or bonds so you can make other bets on crazy biotech companies or, I guess, GameStop is what we're doing this week. And if you're a doomsday prepper who's pretty convinced it's the end times, a safety net might be an underground bunker in your backyard uh, packed with canned pears and dynamite. Safety nets are a complicated systemic concept but the first principles are easy to understand. If millions of Americans are hungry, without water, without health insurance and health care, without child care, without livable wages, whatever we're doing isn't working. And because we live in an interconnected society, not a spaceship made for one, the unequal distribution of safety nets actually affects everyone. As America continues along in a quote-unquote K-shaped recovery, our enormous wealth gap continues to grow. Thus, many Americans haven't had to think about a proper can I buy food this week safety net for some time now, while others are further away from one than ever before. White people are, for the most part, born with a safety net, the color of their skin. This simple Unearned genetic inheritance provides a set of boots, enabling most white people to simultaneously feel protected from sudden life changes and to take risks and embrace opportunities. Now, it's all relative, but white people like me can 
stuff away a bunch of cash and then take advantage of opportunities like non-existent interest rates and skyrocketing market values to remortgage houses and buy Tesla or Bitcoin. Because the goal is growth through compounding interest, not figuring out how to pick up free school lunches during your 12-hour on-site work shift during a pandemic. In a world that is more volatile than ever, with a list of externalities that includes invisible novel viruses in your living room and workplace and actual oceans making their way into your kitchen, it's more important than ever that we think through what it means for everyone to have a safety net. As Morgan Housel will tell you, a functionable, reliable margin of safety means not having to sell your stocks and interrupt compounding interest when shit hits the fan. And compound interest is incredible. It's everywhere. For example, the Ice Age didn't happen because it suddenly got super cold outside. It happened because the summers were gradually and consistently more tepid, and the ice just eventually didn't melt. But compound interest goes both ways. I mean, look at the climate crisis, or the continued state of black housing, land ownership, food, college debt, and education. Positive compound interest means not having to choose between food and rent. You don't even have to think about that. When you don't have to worry about rent and food, you can do so much more. It means building an infrastructure and culture of wellness and prevention, not just going to the emergency room with no idea why your chest hurts. Because, and this is vital to understand, it's not usually the suddenly sick person paying that bill. Ambulance rides and emergency room visits that are unable to be paid for by the patient are often paid for by the hospital with something called charity care, and that's subsidized by state grants, basically your tax dollars. And of course, 60% of the time, that sick person isn't white. And this is the system we've designed. That person doesn't have a safety net. A safety net means paying wages that allow for less congested three-generation living conditions that viruses can't thrive in, that allow for healthy plant-based foods and building a strong microbiome, that allow for not living next to fucking fossil fuel facilities and uncapped wells so kids can grow and learn and breathe. And you'd be amazed at what kids can do when they can grow and learn and breathe. It means paid sick leave for the days you just can't do it, whether you're suffering physically or mentally, so you can do your best work on the other days. A safety net is paid parental leave for welcoming a child into your family. It's childcare once you go back to work and preschool after that, for your mental health, for your performance at work, for your child's future. It means giving every American child a few thousand bucks every year starting at birth to be spent and or invested however the parents see fit for food now and for turning on that fiscal compound interest for the rest of their lives. We can do better. We can make sure people land on their feet and that the entire society benefits. A society that decides that safety nets of every kind should be universal will find her citizens able to reach further and faster and will suffer far less when faced with a pandemic. Now, your challenge is to consider the safety nets available to you today and to manifest ways you can extend those to your business and your community to lift all boats. Now, a bunch of white guys a long time ago said the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are unalienable. But I'll tell you this, a hungry person has no liberty, no freedom, no safety net. So millions of Americans have no liberty to speak of. And Martin Luther King talked about that in Washington. To paraphrase here, he said, ever since the founding fathers of our nation dreamed this dream, America has been something of a schizophrenic personality. On the one hand, we have proudly professed the noble principles of democracy, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But on the other hand, we have sadly practiced the very antithesis of those principles. And now more than ever before, America is challenged to realize its noble dream 
for the shape of the world today does not permit us the luxury of an anemic democracy. Our hour is late, and the clock of destiny is ticking out. And look, we can't expect people to solve existential crises like climate change when they can't keep their water turned on. So I ask you today, look to your own safety nets and find ways to extend them to your neighbors. All right, folks, last thing before we go, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, uh, a rating and a review would go a long way to supporting our community. Uh, same thing for, for instance, Overcast. You can just tap that star button right on your screen. It takes just a second. Um, and of course, we would love if you joined our community and subscribed to these episodes today anywhere you listen to podcasts. Um, once again, as always, you'll find plenty more awesome tools to fight for a better future at our website and in our newsletter at importantnotimportant.com. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.